This is Crafter from Sound Theory, and I'm going to show you how it can make your mixes much, much louder. Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. As you can hear, I'm not. I've literally jumped out of my sick bed because I'm so enthusiastic to tell you about this new plugin, Crafter, from Sound Theory, who also, of course, brought us golfers now i promised up front there'd be loudness benefits to this plugin so i'm going to start off by demonstrating that first before i show you how i achieved it so let's dive in so i'm going to start off by actually bypassing the plugin so we can hear our example track without crafter being applied and also i'm just going to show you some metering in the bottom corner here so we can kind of see what's going on with the track let's have a quick listen to a few seconds now Now, if we take a closer look at the metering, there's a couple of really important numbers here. The first one is we have a true peak value of minus 0.1 decibels. So we're about as far as we can go with the peak. We couldn't use the fader just to increase the volume of this track any further. Um, we're going to have to find a different way. The second value I want you to take notice of here is the LUFS value. We can see it's minus 13.9 or so, more or less minus 14 luffs okay now that's an important number because it's this kind of average volume of the track which really changes our perception of how loud it is okay so let's go back to the plugin we'll turn the bypass button off so that we're actually using crafter now to affect the track and I'll also go ahead and reset the metering let's have a listen again now I've got to warn you if you turn the volume of this video up earlier because that track sounded a little quiet you may want to adjust that now because it's going to be significantly louder than it was early on three two one let's listen and I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane the Daily Planet are the people there he's just so you probably noticed right away how much louder it was. And if we take a look at the metering, we still have a true peak value of minus 0.1. So that hasn't changed. But look at the LUFS value. It's now around about minus 9 decibels here, okay? So we've actually gained something in the region of 5 decibels there. And that's why it sounds significantly louder. That's without using any kind of limiting or anything anything like that just using this crafter plugin which is mostly about saturation now i'm just going to do a quick side by side to really sort of drive this home we're going to listen to the track again i'm quickly going to switch between bypassed and not bypassed let's have a listen and I guess superman never really ever gave a damn So really quite a significant difference there in loudness. But this isn't all about loudness. Let's dive in and take a closer look. So Crafter is both a saturator and a clipper, but most of the interface is dedicated to saturation. It outputs three main signals our dry or original signal, a single band saturated signal, so that is saturation applied to all of the frequencies, and then a multi-band saturated signal. This is saturation applied in different amounts to three different frequency ranges. Now we can blend those three different signals with this handy control in the top left hand side here. It's really intuitive and I like the use of the triangle and the way it ends up being an arrow as you move it towards one particular corner. Now in the middle our interface is dedicated to metering. At the bottom we have our input metering and then on the right hand side we have our output metering and we'll talk about the different colors a little bit later on. 
On the bottom right hand side we have our controls for our clipper and that means we're mainly going to be using this ceiling control here. And then at the top right we have a really important control and this is the match control. Now when you engage this, the kind of loudness of the plugin is taken out of the equation. So that means that you can make your adjustments to the controls and hear how it's affecting the sound of your track without being distracted by the changes in loudness. So that's very handy. And normally you're gonna switch this off again to finally hear the benefits of the loudness as well as the changes in the kind of tone of your track as well. And as a quick, by the way, before we dive into this a little bit further, I just wanna say we can change the color of the interface by clicking on the triangle logo up here and we can change to a few different sort of color schemes here. So I, I personally like the dark one. So that's the main parts of the interface. Let's dive in to some single band saturation. So with our single band process, we're applying the saturation to the full frequency range and our main controls for affecting this are the drive offset and knee controls now before we dive into those I'm just going to change our blend control so that we're only hearing the single band processing and I'm going to switch on the match control as well so that we're not being distracted by the loudness benefits of the saturation now the main control I'm going to use is this drive control which is really an in input gain control and of course as you add more input gain you're going to get more saturation so let's have a listen to the track and gradually push this up but listen to how it's changing the character of the sound and I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane the Daily Planet all the people there he's just sure so you can hear there's a point there when I drive it really hard where we get this, what I'm going to call unpleasant distortion. It's only unpleasant if it's not what you want to hear. Of course, you could be using it for effect and that's what you want to hear. But in this case, where I'm using this in a sort of a mastering context, I'm going to describe that as unpleasant. So what I would do is find the point where I can't hear that so-called unpleasantness, but I am getting the benefits in character character and loudness of the saturation. So let me try that again and I'll try and find that point. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. So I could hear it at around about nine decibels or so and then I just backed off from there a little bit. So we can hear a difference in the character. It sounds a little bit sort of edgier to me without being overt in that way. Now what I'm gonna do now quickly is switch off the match control, or switch between matched and not matched so you can hear the actual loudness benefit. And I guess Superman Never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane The Daily Planet are the people there He's just so that's quite a big loudness benefit all by itself. And we've really adjusted the loudness in terms of the average volume, if you like, without adjusting the peak by very much at all, if by anything. Now the other two controls, offset and knee, are a kind of a fine control over where that saturation really kicks in. The offset control, if you see when I adjust it, it's adjusting the curve in the graph in the middle there and you can see how it would affect the point at which the transients are affected by the saturation, okay? The knee control is similar, it does affect this curve, but much closer to that point of saturation, okay? So we can see the knee control affecting the curve there. Now, of course, as I hear that saturation when I'm adjusting that drive control, and there is that point where it becomes perhaps unpleasant to me, it may be that that's occurring within a certain frequency range, which for me is where the multiband processing really comes in. So the multiband processing allows us to apply saturation to three different frequency ranges, the low, the mids, and the highs. You can see the three controls here at the bottom. 
we can control the crossover points of those frequency ranges at the top. If we just go to a crossover point here and click, we can drag left and right to adjust exactly which frequency that crossover occurs for each band. And we can also solo each band just by clicking on it here. So if I just want to solo the low frequency range and hear how the saturation is affecting that, we can do that. So let's do that now and adjust the low shift. And I want you to take note, I'll mute it and we'll have a look again. I want you to take note of what's happening here with this orange bar. Can you see there's the orange bar and then we get this brighter bit here, this kind of yellow bit here. That's the point at which the saturation is occurring. And as I push the control up, you'll see that it's shifted lower. So there's more of it being affected by saturation. As I move it down, it shifts up and we get less saturation um, in, the, in the sort of top end of that, okay? So that's how the color scheme is sort of working. So we've got our orange control there, we've got our blue for the mids, and then we've got our yellow for the high frequencies. So you can then go ahead and make adjustments to each of those, those frequency ranges and get a much more sort of tailored effect here uh, for your saturation. Now if we combine those dry, single and multi-band process signals all together, we're likely to end up with an output which is louder than 0 dBFS a lot of the time, which is where the clipper comes in really handy. We've got this soft clipper with, where the controls are in the bottom right here, and if we set the ceiling to 0 dB, then it's going to clip at that point, so we're not going to really go over that. Now, interestingly, although we do also have an output gain control, it actually precedes the clipper in terms of processing. So it's almost like we get another stage of drive here. So we can actually increase our loudness here as well. Or if you want the effect of clipping, you can also get that here as well. But for me, it's a really big advantage. It's another stage where we can drive the loudness. I didn't even use this really earlier on when I was demonstrating the loudness benefits. But that is a very useful and interesting control that we have here in the bottom right. I've got to say, I'm super impressed with this plugin. You get great results. It's very quick and it's also very easy. If you want to try it out on your own music, just follow the link in the description down below and they've got a free trial running at the moment. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video. I'll see you in the next video, but for now, I'm heading back to bed.